thanks for uh, ordering the Dark Matters collection. So in this tutorial we are going to be covering the project layout, the color presets and controllers, changing your text, the environments, playing around with particles, working with the ghost mats, and your optional placeholders. When you open up the project file, let's start over in the left hand corner here. You're going to see everything's organized from comps to text pre comps placeholders. So, your comps for the entire project are going to be laid out here. And of course, your text, any text you want to modify, and your text pre comps are going to be laid out in number two, the text pre comps. The placeholders are optional, and I put 10 inside the project. I didn't show it in the final render preview because I was really uh, trying to show off the, the footage and the atmosphere. I really didn't want anything kind of overshadowing that. But I did place some uh, video and photo placeholders in certain comps. But I also have a folder here called Extra Drag and Drop. Now, these placeholders are not inside any of the comps, but I did create more for you so you had an option if you needed more placeholders for... Uh, video and photos and you know you kinda ran out of uh, using 10 here inside the project and you want to add more you know you can just drag and drop these inside whatever comp turn them 3D and uh, play around with them in your environment uh, the particle pre-comps are these are just the uh, texture pre-comp files that CC Particle World is reading from you know for some of the comps that have like little dead flies buzzing around and orbs and all that stuff and then the map precomps are just the depth of field mats used to give that depth of field effect using the camera lens blur inside of After Effects. So all your dark matters uh, footage, your mats, your stock footage are going to be located inside this folder here, number six, dark matters collection. And then we have the renders folder. And what you're looking at at the bottom here in the timeline is the entire layout, all the comps put together, pretty much what you see in the final preview. But I also felt you might want some shorter versions of it. You may not want a whole three and a half, four minute type of uh, project layout. Rather, uh, I divided it up into chapters. So, you know, they run anywhere from about 50 to 30 seconds. And they're also in a variety of size formats. So just to note that you can see if I click on a comp here, all the comps are on the original size of 4096 by 1680, 4K. Yeah, I gave it the 4K treatment because all the content was shot in actually 5K, uh, but I bumped it down to 4K. And, you know, there's a lot of great stuff you can do in terms of uh, scaling the footage, not losing resolution. And also you'll notice if I go into the 720p render here for a minute, and this is going to contain all of uh, chapter one okay so you can see comp three through ten that's the only part that's going to render for chapter one if i go to view up top and i go to resolution you're going to see that this is set at a quarter resolution and you're going to do that so you can have a faster workflow we're working for we're working in 4k but it's not 4k raw the files are going to move really quick i think you'll be surprised i'm actually doing this tutorial from a uh just a MacBook Pro laptop, nothing beefy. You can see that with a quarter resolution, it gets very pixelated, and you know that's so you can kind of work a little bit faster. However, if I go into a 4K, you can see in this case we have some text, and it looks pretty pretty good. And if I go up top to view resolution, you're going to see that in 4K at a quarter resolution, how well that holds up, and you'll be able to work in these comps rather. Uh, quickly I think you again you'll be surprised so again these are all divided up into chapters as well as your full layout so the full layout folder is gonna contain all the comps together so again you have a 4k 720p 1080p inside of every render folder here okay looking at our color presets and controllers uh, starting at the very top here we have a vignette and that's just going to give us a little dark edging around the uh, edges of the frame and you can just turn these on and off as you choose 
Uh, next is the out of focus controller. And that's just going to have a blur effect. So if you want to disrupt the image and make it go in and out of focus, you're going to want to just bump up the value. And you can see that it moves out of focus. Next is going to be our sprocket controller. So we can pull the X axis like so. And you're going to see that it goes off hinge. Or we can do it Y. And of course we can animate these to uh, go in and out as you choose. And then we're going to have all our color presets starting from 1 to 15. And you can turn these on and off. So I just try to give you a lot of options. And again, these are all going to be applied to both the chapter layout renders as well as the full render layout. Now below that I separated out the curves, the brightness, the HDR expander levels and saturation just you know just to make it easier for you so again turn these on or off as you choose uh, the brightness so you can bump up the exposure levels if you need to again options for you to play around with so you can see here as I bump up the exposure and then we have the HDR expander so you can get a nice dark crush with your blacks and expose up the whites really brings everything out. And then we have our levels. and saturation. So you can desaturate the colors here or bump up the saturation values so you get a lot more color going on. And then we have our overexposure, grain, noise, dust. And go into our overexposure a little bit quick. This is what I use just to kind of use it between cuts. So as you can see here, you know, it starts at zero and then make a keyframe, bump up the value really high. And that's going to really just wash out everything and bring it back down to zero really quick. So this happens all within under a second. So you get that little flash effect. Uh, changing your text is very easy. So in all the comps, uh, for the most part, you're going to see a text pre-comp. And we can just double click right on that text pre-comp. And you'll see our text. And we can just highlight the text layer, change it. Come back, and everything's changed. Now, just a, a little bit quick of a note, you're going to see uh, in this case we have uh, these ink runs here and they may or may not line up for you depending on what your text is so you can just highlight each uh, ink run here and move it as you see fit You can also change your text precomps in the text precomp folder. So you can just go into the text precomp folder, double click, modify your text very quickly. The process is no different with the 3D extruded text. So I'm going to go into comp 16 for one second, where we have some 3D extruded text. Now you're going to see a 3D text controller here for which you can modify your, your text. So you can go into the extrude depth bump up the value for that or bump it down. In this case, I'm going to just do 225 for a second. You're going to see that pops out more extrusion. So look at the text controller, play around with that. However, you're going to want to change your 3D text by clicking on the layer. It says change text here. So if we double click on there, it's going to bring us into our text pre-comp and we can just change our text quickly. Try to stay within the range of the box if, if you can. And there you go. Quick and easy.
Now, environments are going to be a, a lot of fun to play around with in, in this project, I think. I'm going to take uh, Comp 6 for a second. You're going to have a 3D camera, which is tracking the environment. And you're going to see uh, some nulls. In this case, I have uh, a few references for nulls for back wall and wall number one, wall number two, and the foreground. Now, what I suggest is if you are going to be playing around with uh, experimenting with the environment, you're going to want to get to get into at least two views. And what I like to do is go into two views. One of my views, I'm going to have the perspective of the camera. And in the second view, I'm going to have a top angle. And that's going to let me see everything from overhead. This makes it easier for me to get an understanding of where things are to the camera. If you highlight each layer, you kind of get an understanding of where things lay in the environment. And that just gives you a better reference to where to place objects if you do choose to place some new things in the environment. I got my foreground right there, and that's where the text is laying. So you can see it's rather tight to the camera, which it is in, in the actual shot. And then I'm going to have my text pre-comp here, and that's where I can, of course, go in, double-click and change the text on the foreground wall. If I scroll down here, you're also going to see uh, my little fallen angel. If I click on my, my dark shadow here, the fallen angel, you can see when I highlight him, I can move him through space. And in the right-hand side, gives you a good perspective through the camera of you know where he sits. So you can figure out if you need to put him up, down, push him back, push him forward. Now here's a quick tip. If you wanted to change the fallen angel in this case to a uh, different one, if I go into my folder for a second, you can see that in the project we have fallen angel 1. Now if you highlight that layer in your timeline, highlight it, now I'm going to go and grab a different fallen angel video. And I'm just going to highlight number 4 in the folder. So if you hold down the option key and drag and drop the one in the timeline, you're going to see that it replaces it. Okay? So kind of a little trick so you don't have to go and redo everything. You're going to see that it replaces it. Now this goes for anything you want to replace on the fly. Here's some tips when you're playing with the uh, particles of the project. Now, I'm just going to use the same comp, comp number 6 again, as an example. Uh, in all the comps, you're going to see a layer or two labeled particle. In this case, we have particle flies, particle bees. And those particles are uh, CC particle world. And those flies and bee particles are using a fly pre-comp. And in this case, the particle flies, you can see here, in the particle category, we are using a particle type. Uh, I'm using a texture faded disk. And that texture faded disk, for which you can use textured disk or textured square, textured pot tri polygon. Uh, in this case, we need a textured layer. And that textured layer is calling to the fly precomp. Okay. And therefore, the fly precomp is going to be generating, in this case, are fly particles. Now I'm just going to bump up the size for a second just so you can see. And you know, you can mess around, play around with the uh, the rotations and, and those values and see what type of effect you get. Um, but that's what's happening. The texture fly pre-comp. So you can see, if I were to change this uh, pre-comp to texture pre-comp, now we're getting a whole different value. Okay, so those flies are gone. Now we just have a plain texture. Okay, so that's just so you understand. Now, if I were to double click and go inside this fly precomp, and let's just say I grab a different texture, in this case, another B. I'm just going to put this on top, and I'm going to scale down the size a little bit so we want to be able to see the entire image inside this precomp here. So I'm just going to turn it. Now, if I go back, you're going to see that all the particles have been replaced. So, you know, play around, experiment if you wish. In the end, I think you want to bump down the size so they're not really gigantic and 
just small and in the environment, in the atmosphere. So when playing around, if you choose to, you can experiment with the velocity. So if you bump up the velocity a little bit, you're going to see them spread out a little bit more. And they're probably going to move a lot faster. If you bump up the birth rate here, you're going to get a lot more being born. So play around with this and, and have some fun. So working with the mats is part of the, the fun with this project, I think. Let's take comp number seven for a second. You're going to see a variety of mats here, such as the oil spill number two. So I'm just going to turn these on and off so you can get an idea of uh, things that make up this particular comp. We have our trap shadow back there. And if we're going to add any more of these ghostly mats, I'm going to drag and drop it here. And you're going to notice that we have this white background here. So to get rid of this, what we want to do is, uh, if I click on the other ghost that's sitting in the background for a second, let's just take a look. Um, he's hanging upside down in the doorway. So you're going to see that we have a set matte effect on there and some blurs. Uh, but really the set mat is what is getting rid of this this white background. So if you're going to do that, the best way to do this is to, of course, highlight your mat. We're going to go to Effect, Channel, Set Mat. And we want to set the mat to a luminance. And now we want to invert that luminance. So now at this point, in order to get rid of that, that white haze around the edges, it's all going to depend on our blending mode. Uh, we're going to go to mode and we may try an overlay. You can see right there that starts to uh, get rid of everything. Uh, also, you can try something like multiply. And you're going to see some more ink starts to show. And we also have silhouette alpha, which I think is probably the best right there. So experiment with the blending modes. Uh, next, we're going to turn this 3D. And you see when we turn it 3D, we are dealing with a 4K size mat, uh, which is pretty cool. But we do need to scale this down. So this is where I think you may want to go into two views. And I'm just going to do that for a second. We're able to get an idea of the environment. We're just going to click on you know, in this case, the fallen angel, we can see that he's sitting in the middle of our environment. And again, we have these null references to point out where uh, things are in space, in 3D space. So I'm just going to grab this mat and push it back in the Z axis. And uh, now I'm going to want to scale this down. So you want to hit the letter S on your keyboard, which will bring up your scale. I'm just going to bump him down. Um, around 55 I think all right so now going back into one view uh, he's he's closer to the back wall so I think you know you may want to uh, play around with this I think the idea of having these ghostly images suspended in in gravity you know going upside down and things like that make it for a better a better shot So now you're going to see in some of these comps that you do have an optional placeholder layer in the timeline. And that's automatically going to be turned off. So you can see here in comp number seven, uh, I have this placeholder number four. So I'm just going to turn off the text for a second. And I'm going to switch on the placeholder. And you're going to see that you're going to have a place video photo here. So if we double click and we're going to go inside that placeholder for a second, I just put a slide JPEG on there for you so you can shut it off or uh, uh, keep it on. But if you decide to keep it in, a couple things I want to point out here is if I grab a photo for a second, I'm just going to drag and drop it underneath my slide. You may run into this issue where you see some of the remnants of the, uh, the photo 
within the slide. So if this happens, uh, what you can simply do to get rid of that is highlight the slide. We're going to go to the effects control. And we're going to turn off the set mat. We want to get rid of this white totally. So we're going to go to effect keying and we're going to get a color key effect. And you just want to grab this little eyedropper, drop it on the white area, and boom, it'll be gone. And we can just play around with the color tolerance if you need to. Okay, so that, again, that's if you decide to use a slide. So I'm going to go back for a second and go back into the comp. And you're going to see that um, we do have this emboss effect on there. If you do want to get rid of that emboss effect, just simply highlight the placeholder and check off the emboss effect right there. And from there, you can really just experiment with the different blending modes. You know, try an overlay, an add, uh, and see what you like. Okay, so finally, I'm going to switch into two views over here for a second. And in the case where you want to add a new placeholder in your environment, just want to quickly go over that. We can see here from a top view uh, kind of where the wall is and where the uh, placeholder here is sitting. But I'm going, to go, I'm going to go ahead and add another placeholder. So I'm going to go to placeholders. And remember, we have this folder called extra drag and drop. I'm going to grab a placeholder and just drag and drop it here. You can see that it's sitting in the middle of my uh, floor here. So if I just push this back really for a moment. And now I'm going to hit the letter W, or you can go to your rotation tool. And I'm just going to rotate the Y axis for a second. Now if you hit the letter V, that's going to bring you back to your selection tool. And I'm just going to move this up. And then I'm going to just scale this down really quick. Just make it a little bit smaller. And just move this back so I can grab the X axis and just pull that over to the right and just move this back a little bit more. All right. So you're going to see we have our placeholder sitting in the environment. And uh, one little problem, if I just move this over to the right, you can see that these scraps in the foreground are being overlapped. So you want to make sure that you grab your placeholder drag and drop it underneath all the paper scraps. And then you're going to see that overlaps everything and it looks the way it should. All right, so now you can just double click on your placeholder. And if you have a video or photo, just go ahead and grab it. I'm just going to grab a photo here and drag and drop it underneath the film frame. I'm just going to scale this up. And you can see because my uh, image really overlaps uh, the film frame, what I'm going to do is highlight the image. And I'm going to go up top to my rectangle tool. And if I grab the rectangle tool, I'm just going to make a mask around the photo using the film frame as a uh, reference. And then we have a mask here. So I'm just going to get the edges, uh, feather the mask edges, make it about 9 pixels and... That looks good. Quick little effects you may want to experiment with. Um, for one, if you go to Effect Color Correction, you can get a hue saturation. You can desaturate the uh, color. Then go to Effect Color Correction. Maybe grab some curves. And bring down the curves. And these are just little tips. You don't have to do this, but figured I'd show you. And uh, again, you can go to uh, Effect, Stylize, Roughen Edges, and that's just going to kind of uh, eat up the edges of the frame a little bit, so it kind of gives a little bit of a decrepit feel. And you can play around with these edge types, and scale the border, and, you know, see what you like. And finally, I'm going to go to Effect, Stylize, and I'm going to get CC Burn Film. 
bump up the value a little bit just so it starts to eat away at the image not too much but you know again this kind of fits the atmosphere of the uh, the project I think and these are just kind of little uh, built-in effects you might want to play around with again you're gonna see that the majority of comps are all built the same in terms of mats in 3d camera tracking systems and how those are applied to each particular shot so if you have any other questions please feel free to email me that's pretty much it so I hope this tutorial helped you know I think with a project like this you know the idea was for it to be very creepy and a little bit out there and that's what makes it fun and you probably want your reaction when people watch it at the end to look and say to you what the f are you thinking you really you know you really want that type of reaction so and again thank you for ordering the dark matters collection